What's going on Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and today I'm going to do a quick overview of the Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman Complete Collections. So far we have two volumes, so let's check them out. Stay tuned. Okay, now let's check these out real quick. As I mentioned, there are two volumes so far with probably four of them all together, which would make sense since it's the Fantastic Four. What I really wanted to do was compare them to these pr uh, previously released omnibuses. Uh, not really, I know the size is a lot different, but one of my favorite things about Jonathan Hickman collections, and I'm sure, I'm almost 100% sure at least, that he does this with trade paperbacks as well, is he leaves all the covers in the back of the book. So all the covers are back here. Every one of the covers, whether it's a variant cover or whether it's a main cover, they're all in the back of the book. Yeah, you don't know where one issue begins and another one ends with the exception of this, where he puts the quotes up here. So I wanted to see if it was the same case with these two books. So let's check it out because I love that kind of mapping. He does the same things with his image books, his collections of like East of West. So it looks like he does. Yeah. So this first book is right at around 384 pages long. Um, and let's see how it lays. Yeah, it lays pretty good. It's a pretty big book. We're talking 384 pages and it's built nice. You know, it's your typical glued binding for a trade paperback. It holds nice. The paper quality is it's not thin. It's not too thick. It's glossy. Um, yeah, I love that the fact that these are broken up by chapters with this. That's how you're able to tell. It retails for $39.99, by the way. Now, this particular volume collects issues one through five of the miniseries uh, Fantastic Four Dark Reign, which is where he got his start writing Fantastic Four. And it also collects uh, Fantastic Four 570 through 578, and then material from the Dark Reign to Cabal, which is where everything kind of started. If you've never read any of his work at Marvel, this is probably my favorite thing that he has written. Um, well, outside of his X-Men right now that he's doing, the House of X and Powers of Ten. Um, well, I guess that still has a chance of sucking, depending on how that ending goes. But this was classic. This was a return to classic FF story. It's a mystery. It has sci-fi elements, fantasy elements, horror elements, and it's just such a good throwback to FF. I really enjoyed this run. It's up there with like Mark Wade and uh, John Burns run for me. And I know it's a lot of people's favorite run. Now let's look at volume two really quick. Okay, here is the cover to volume two and the spine. Identical to the first one with the exception of different creative team. Well, it's still Jonathan Hickman, of course, but it's all these different artists like Steve Epting and Barry Kitson and volume two. And again, retails for thirty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. However, this one has a page count of 432 pages. So it's a little bit thicker. And this collects Fantastic Four 579 to 588. And then it also collects the FF run 1 through 5. Now that's when the book revamps and it takes a change in tone. And it becomes the FF, which is the Future Foundation. I don't want to flip too much through here, but I did want to check out the pages. And we'll look at the back here in a second. That's right. That's when uh, Namor was hanging out with the X-Men. Now, those omnibuses have been out of print for a little bit. And in the aftermarket, they go for a ridiculous amount of money. But, you know, I hate to tell anybody to go and buy a $300 omnibus if they've never read it. And, you know, it's your money. You all do what you need to do or want to do. But... If you want to try it out, I think this is the best way to do it. I mean, both of these books contain pretty much what's in Volume 1 and some of Volume 2 of the Omnibuses. And like I said, there should be a total of four of these if I'm, not, if I'm doing the math right. Of course, you can buy these and use them as what I like to call placeholders. And when the Omnibuses are reprinted, you can upgrade. Now, that's something my dumbass does. You don't have to do that. Actually, if you're smart, you wouldn't do that. You'd just keep these. Now, let's check out the cover gallery here. So, yeah, this is what he does in all his books. All the covers are back here. And I love that about it. This is, these are all done by Alan Davis. That's cool. 
that's the cover to the volume. There's the Steve Epting's FF covers, Daniel Acuna. And of course, the variants. Oh, I really like that Dr. Doom by Arthur Adams. That's nice. Yeah, I think Arthur Adams is my favorite artist that draws the thing. He's only done like three issues of the Fantastic Four, and that was during the new Fantastic Four. There's different printings of issues 584 to 586. More variants. Wow. House ad. And then there's the script. Like, he always adds a little bit of the script towards the end, too. And that was the contents of the book and how they are mapped. Let me know in the comments down below if this is the way that you're collecting it in trade paperback or big fat trade format. Or if you're waiting for the omnibuses to come back into reprint. Are you even an omnibus collector? Or do you just like collecting them in this easier to read format? I'd love to know your responses. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.